But you should be worried about you can't die in your absence. Sure. It's very important for you to prepare for this because definitely when you die, you will be there. Yeah. It's the worst risk in life to live a life and yet you are not prepared for this. Because it's real. I'm quite aware of the, of the limits of the time. I uh, want to make just a few comments about death itself, and then I'll read just one line of scripture and then throw a few thoughts about that. I'm glad that I'm here. And again, Oscar, Abu Nicholas, Blair, now is Swam, who is 60 lady of the corner, with Abu Nicholas. I would have come. If, if you didn't do that. Why? I love it. All of it. I'll do that. Only in it. That we have a title. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Not in the world. From my dear home. us to, to, to know these few thoughts about death. <laughs> death is a great revealer. He's a great revealer. I work at El Guabas Company and the chief executive officer. We experience this almost daily. Figuring was cut. It went, it went literally, it went So let me know here. We take that lady, we put her in a special room to pray with her and counsel her and try to find out what has happened. Say, my husband has passed away. My husband has passed away. And Jobu Mira Mesuri Gilenje and Yumban Gem Nakapand is over the summer. Protocol. Okay, who are you? Give us your ID uh, so that we can check in the records of. So, HR, you get the Porsche alone, you get here, you open the files, and go scarcely. Good choice. And you push your car off. It's very difficult to go back to that person and say, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I am waiting for good choice. Who was registered here is the wife of this man. Okay. We can find it difficult to, to indulge any information to you because you are not here. It's a little observer. And then we are all down. Look, you give a quest as a little. And then you get a quest. You hear the story, I've stayed with him for 20 years. He's my husband. And this and this and this and this and this and this. that they have to take 
If I was going to preach, if there was time, the psalmist, the psalmist, it, it, it's amazing, uh, the psalm. have you ever noticed that in almost in all the churches, when there is a funeral, the first reading is Psalm 90? All of the churches, they will read Psalm 90, and then they will do it, whatever they do is part of the liturgy, 
And then the question I ask myself, why on death we read this song? Why is it so important? I, I'm not going to get time to go through it all. It has only 17 verses. Only 17 verses. And, and, and it's broken into three parts. It's 1 to 6, 7 to 11, uh, uh, and then 12 to 17. And, and, and 1 to 6 is, 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 is a powerful contrast between the eternity of God and the frailty and the, and the, and the shortness of life of mankind. That's 1 to 6. And then 7 to, to 11, it's only about five verses, but you find there five times the wrath of God, the wrath of God, the wrath of God, the wrath of God. It speaks about the wrath of God at 7 to 11. Then you, you come to verse 12 to 17, which is the part that I'm looking at, which is a petition. And then it starts with this, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Then I want just to talk about that and then we, we part ways. And specifically, I want to speak to the children of Nick. I'll tell you why I want to speak to you, my child. I want to speak to you because I came to know the Lord in 1975. It was the death of my mother. Without that day, I would be here. I would have never met Nick. I would never be an impact on him, Tom, and everybody that is here. It was on the death of my mother that for the first time, my ears opened. And I began to understand and to hear. This, this, is, a, this is a powerful poetry uh, where he, he starts by this contrast of the eternity of God and the frailty and the shortness and the brutality of man's life. Uh, what he talks about there, he speaks about life is shot. We, we need to value life because life is very short. And Nick, you're speaking of somebody who's about 50 years old. 50 years old. I'm sorry. Nick is 50. He's gone. He is no more. You look at what he has achieved. You, you begin to think what if he had another 20 years like me? Where would it be? Life is short. There is no guarantee for tomorrow. Death is certain. Remember, Nick? There's something else that you need to understand. When we were young, we used to talk cooler. Would you, after all, this is my life. Nobody can tell you what to do about my life. Can I tell you something? That's a lie. Nobody has his own life. How do I know that? Nick is dead. Now! There are about five people, eight people, ten people. Your life has come to a standstill because your life is directly linked to Nick's life. You need to understand that it is a myth that you have a life. Your life is directly linked to our lives. Therefore, as you take care of your life, you are taking care of our lives. When we speak to you, we need to say to you, take care of our lives. Because that's not your life. That's our life. If I can decide now to commit suicide, because I'm doing I'm 70 years old, and I feel like this is my life. My wife is here, I've got four kids, I've got grandchildren. If I can die today, that woman is stuck. My children, stuck. My grandchildren wouldn't even know what hits them because this is not my life. I don't think sometimes I even cross Nick's mind. 
He's so busy, he's all the way to Johannesburg, he's flying to Joburg, he's busy, financial advice and all of that. But can I tell you something? This thing has affected me more than you can imagine. Because his life has an impact on me. Can I say it again? Take good care of our lives. Your life is not your life. Mm. Which means no one will allow to be a book. My wife mustn't cry because the pastor mm. said that she did it. But I want, I, I want you, I want you, I want you to, I want you to listen to me carefully. Most I get home don't allow you. No one knows you can't allow me now. We are not. About the land, it's so good. It's a very lala in me. And if you continue to do that, it's going to take its toll on you and going to disintegrate. You are meant to sleep. Okay? Are we, are we all in the same way, man? Yeah. Which means then, if that is the case, uh, if your life is 70 years, let's take 50% of that, you are sleeping. In actual fact, you have 35 years. Now, if you take 35 years, you take the first five years, maybe it's not that much meaningful that you have done. You start to school at seven. Let's say, in actual fact, you've got 30 years. That's your life. And in that 50 years, you are expected to, have such a, to make such impact and dent this life. That is how short life is. Because remember, you are not working 24 hours. You can't. You go to sleep. You lost time. There's nothing you are doing that time. So you got 35. Then you take 35, take 5 off, and then you are 30 years. You got only 30 years to live. That's too short. But not only that. That 30 years. Utu two be crazy time I chapter up for him. U verse 1. Undu pinde zero mfafi. In Messiah, you will be futile. Israel is in that house. You understand what I said? So, which means the days are few, full of troubles. These days, few as they are, they are overwhelmed and loaded by the troubles. And one of the troubles that we have is to be here today, to face the death of need at the age of 80. Life is short. Now listen to this. He, he, he comes to 7 to 11. He speaks about this wrath of God. And he gives you the reason for that. He says because of the sins, especially those that we think we have hidden from God. And God is angry with that. Uh, I think Funtukosi now if is there anything that we don't preach about in our churches, it's about the wrath of God. We have grown to be so casual about God, He's loving, He's gracious, He's peaceful, He loves us, He's a pet. Can you tell us something? God has a wrath. Put up a robe chapter one. He moved on our table. Chili. There are consequences for wrongs that we are doing. Ourselves. You know, life is cruel in a sense that life doesn't allow you to get away with mistakes that you have made. It postpones the judgment. And for every good you do, life will make sure that you are paid back. Take good care of your life. And God has wrath. It comes to this verse 12, and then I close. He says, teach us to 
Namma our days. Let me, let me explain to you here because you may think that this, this number of days we are speaking of the mathematical one, two, three, four, five. It does not speak of that. No. That, that is not that kind of number. Let me tell you something about what does he mean when he say, teach us to number of our days. Then the Pangele Ford, for a decade, the Pangele Ford, the Minyagin Shumi, that the Nabang Chairman of Makosa, and founder of the Union. You know, before they put the car in the market, they launch the product, whether it's the MW or Mercedes Benz. The first thing they do, they make sure that the warehouses are flooded with parts. Because can you imagine, like the Chinese, you buy a car. If you an accident, you hold for a part, they don't want the part. They still have to order it. You may get it in six months time or three months time. What they do, they make up the parts, flood the warehouses and all of these places with the parts. By the time they launch that car, definitely the pressure plate, the release bearing, the, the, the steering wheel column, you name it, everything, you can get it if anything goes wrong with the car. However, I want you to listen to this. We men, you must listen carefully because we do not know this. When you arrive in this world, You can mess around with your life and lose your eye. It does not matter because there is a spare one. No, there is no spare one. If you mess up with this eye, what's going to happen? You're going to have an artificial eye. If you cut this arm, you're going to have an artificial arm or artificial leg. Because there are no spare parts. Then, 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 then you begin to understand that verse when it says, Lord, teach us to number our days. It speaks about how to put value in life. You value your life. You live a life that is protective and defensive of yourself. Especially in this thing of COVID. One of the things we are very careless, we care free, we don't care. You would think that people have a good spare um, uh, lungs somewhere. If I mess with these lungs, there's a, a spare that my mother put away. I can go there, bring me my new pair of, of lungs. Mm -hmm. Lord, teach us to number our days. Atandagayo. Uh, to everybody that is listening, we need to value life. We don't take life for granted. Now, 
inhlizio elungileyo sifanele ngamanga kwabo you know the difference between knowledge and wisdom this is this i want you to listen to this that's the last one and then, then we will be patterns it is possible that you may lack wisdom once you have knowledge because knowledge is not equal to wisdom but you cannot have wisdom without knowledge because knowledge precedes wisdom then the question that you need to ask yourself what is wisdom what is knowledge that it that is a case it is this wisdom is an applied knowledge which means you can have knowledge and fail to apply that knowledge and the bible not even the bible jesus says you are a fool when i get that matthew and mark where jesus he says in vain go far a teaching at the bonga bawe vanu na mazo operative word bonga bawe vanu whoever heard these words and do them he is